You are a manifesting generator here to visualize, respond, and inform. You are 33% of the population. Your not self theme is a sense of frustration and anger. And your signature theme is this sense of satisfaction and peace. There are two types of manifesting generators. There are pure manifesting generators who have the 2034 channel. Then there is the emotional manifesting generator who has a defined sacral and a defined solar plexus. If you are an emotional manifesting generator, you will find more information on that later on in your podcast. So let's dive into the manifesting generator strategy. The manifesting generator is somebody who is here to first visualize the outcome that they want to get. So thinking about contemplating, journaling, sitting and doing visualization exercise is the first step in the manifesting generator strategy. From there, they can tap into their sacral response. So the sacral response is a from the diaphragm (laughs) sound that is a uh uh uh-huh, uh-uh. And for many, when they have that sacral response, it will often be a body pull. You can feel the body pull or push. It's a lighting up from within. And I always like to jokingly say, you can find the defined sacral beings on a Zoom call because when you are in a group Zoom call, you will see their bodies actually come closer to the screen or further away if something resonates. So with that sacral response, yes, no questions are great because the sacral response is all about responding in the here and now. So the manifesting generator first visualizes, then they have this sacral response, and then they go and they inform and initiate. And as the name sounds, the manifesting generator is part manifester, part generator. They then inform key parties of what they are doing. And then they go and initiate. And what's interesting about the aura of the manifesting generator is it actually operates in two different ways. It operates just like the generator aura when it's in that response. So it's like a big um, enveloping aura. And then when they move into that phase of initiating and informing and just sort of doing their manifesting generator thing, their their aura will, will transform into more of that manifestor aura, which is more um, po- pointed, right? It's more um, piercing, right? And their aura goes back and forth depending upon where they are in their process. And just like a generator, a manifesting generator, you, you're here to really know thyself and really dig deep into the knowing of who you are. Um, Recognition for manifesting generators from projectors is really key. This helps them to discern, am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? Am I going in the right direction? And then they are here to multitask. As a manifesting generator, you're here to multitask. You're here to be multi-passionate. You're here to sort of bounce from thing to thing and almost come across as superhuman in some ways, right? Because manifesting generators can get more done than most of us. They move very, very quickly and they have this sustainable energy from their sacral response. And so one of the things that becomes important for manifesting generators to understand is that they do need to spend time with others and they need to spend time alone and they really need to balance that. And so this manifesting generator strategy of visualizing getting that yes, no from the sacral, and then informing key parties becomes 
their strategy for success and sort of really interacting with the world and interacting with others. And the reality is there's also sort of this divine timing that comes with this manifesting generator strategy. So once a manifesting generator like you gets that visualization, they have that sacral yes or that sacral no, then there's sort of this pause, right? Because manifesting generators are really here to be in the now. They empower others by empowering themselves first, by being in the moment, by being really present. And so it becomes very important for them to pause and sort of wait for that right timing to then initiate and inform the key parties and move forward with their their thing, right? And so because their aura shifts, it's really about understanding where you are in that process. So the, the aura is both opening and, and enveloping and sort of just is like a big hug and it draws life towards you. So it gives you something to respond to. And then it becomes closed and repelling and impacting and empowerful when, when you are in action, when you are focused on doing something and it really just kind of pushes all the obstacles out of the way. And so when we break down this strategy for an MG of visualization, of response, of pause, of informing the pause before the initiation and the pause to visualize allows an MG to get clear on what they really want because they're multitaskers, because they're multi-passionate, they often struggle to slow down and they almost kind of have to like dip their toes into certain things to discern, is this for me or is this not for me? And one of the really amazing things about you as, a, as an MG is that you have sort of this interconnectedness. You may to the outside world seem like you have all of these different hobbies and none of them are connected or, you know, you're taking a class in, in somatics, attachment theory, human design, and um, something else, right? Just pick something random. But the manifesting generator sees the interconnectedness between all of these things. They often have this need for efficiency as well. And, and they can feel really frustrated because other people can slow them down. And so what do I mean by this need for efficiency? So oftentimes they're doing multiple things in multiple areas of life. So an MG will often, just as an example, be like, I'm going to get the dishwasher going first before I do these other things. So the dishwasher is washing, then I'm going to go do this other thing. And then when the dishwasher is done and I'm done with this other thing, I'll go back and empty the dishwasher, right? There, there, There's this efficiency piece that comes with them. And I always like to say they're sort of like organized chaos, right? There's sort of this curiousness that comes with being an MG. And there's also this bit of confusion. So there's a lot of like, I'm curious, but I'm also confused, right? And, and this is because MGs are empowering and ever, and the MGs like, why, what, I don't understand how I'm empowering you. I'm just over here doing my thing. And so they're curious and they're also confused why everybody's so interested in them. And they're very powerful change makers when their aura is in that closed impactful and they're in that doing they create massive transformation. They create massive empowerment. And they, the thing for them is in this informing piece, right? If they're informing key people, and it's important to understand that informing for a manifesting generator like you, it's not about, I'm going to tell all of these people, all of these things, and then wait for feedback from them. It's no, it's I'm informing you, I'm doing this thing. And then I'm going to go forth and do whatever it is that I was planning on doing anyway. But the reciprocity for an MG, so I'm going to inform an MG, hey, I'm doing this thing and they'll inform me. They appreciate that, right? And so it's important to understand that if an, if, if you have an MG in your life, right? If you're an MG in, informing the people, hey, I like to be informed, keep me in the loop of what's going on. That reciprocity means that you've won the trust, right? Or you have somebody's trust. And so it's important to make sure that, that's reciprocal. And so when we think about a manifesting generator, they often skip steps and they become really frustrated because then they have to circle back and they have this deep desire for freedom. Okay. And so 
they really don't like to have to show up at the same time each and every week doing the exact same thing over and over and over and over again. <laughs> um, they are very empowered when they are in alignment or in congruence with their design and therefore they empower other people. They have this sort of just like confidence about them, even though they might not feel it from the outside where they're like, people are like, wow, look at that MG. And the MG is like, I don't see what the fuss is all about. And so when we think about the manifesting generator mind, like I mentioned, they can be curious and confused, right? Because they can be deeply confused because they want to know it all and they want to do all the things. And they're often told that they can't. And they're often told like, what is wrong with you? Why are you trying to learn all of this stuff? Why are you trying to do all these things? Why can't you just stay focused? And they also get confused because they worry. They have this sense of FOMO of like, what am I missing out on by saying no to this thing? Like MGs really truly want to experience all that life has to offer. And then one day they might just wake up and say, this is not the life I want. <laughs> and they burn it all to the ground and they realize like, nope, this isn't for me. Right. And so this, this fear of missing out and this, this need to sort of dip their toe in and try things and sort of this curiousness that comes with being an MG often leads them to feeling like I don't fit in anywhere. I don't know why, but I just can't seem to fit in anywhere. Right. I don't seem to fit in with this group. I don't seem to fit in with that group. And that is perfectly normal as an MG. That is a common thing that most MGs experience. And the reality is the more that you can really embrace your multi-passionate ways and embrace your multitasking and embrace that wonderful curiosity that you have, the easier it will be to be in congruence with, with your design and the mechanics of your design. And so when we think about those not self themes of the MG, which is like anger and frustration, they are overwhelmed because they have so many choices, right? They are like, oh my goodness, there are so many options out here. And they can feel like in this this state of like, I don't know what to choose because if I choose this, I might miss out on that. And if I choose that, I might miss out on this, blah, blah, blah you know, on and on it goes. And so they can be anger and frustrate, angry and frustrated because they spend too much time alone. They, they spend, they can be angry and frustrated because they spend too much time with people and they don't have enough alone time or they don't have enough people time. They can be angry and frustrated because they're, they're not honoring their sacral response. A lot of times MGs end up in this place of like, I'm just constantly initiating and they don't actually tap into that sacral yes, no response, which is part of their strategy. They'll often have FOMO because they're like, oh, I said yes to this thing. And that means I couldn't say yes to all of these other things. And what am I missing over here? I'm so frustrated. Um, and then they end up acting like a manifester all the time. And they're just constantly in this initiation stage. And that leaves them really angry because they're like, why can't, like, why are things working out for me? Like everything is going wrong. And then of course they create turbulence in their relationships because they fail to inform the key people in their lives. And therefore people are like, what are you doing? Why did you just start this new business? Or why did you go and do this new thing? We said we were going to do, do X. And then as a result of that, it creates more anger and more frustration. It creates this sense of like, Oh, what is wrong with me? Like, why can't I just be normal? Um, then we have the whole anger and frustration over skipping steps. People are like, how did you miss all of these things? And the MG is like, I don't know, you know? So they, the, the anger and frustration for an MG can be a lot. And then they can also feel like they're not being heard and they're not being understood because they can feel like nobody really gets them. And so in with certain MGs in my experience, they can also have an inability to articulate themselves. And this usually happens if they have a split definition. So sing, uh, simple split, wide split, 
uh, triple split or quad split. And if you have that in your chart, there will be another episode all specifically on definition for you to listen to, but there can be this struggle to articulate themselves. So single definition manifesting generators, they they'll be able to articulate themselves. So when you get into that split, quad split, triple split, there may be a struggle for them to express and articulate their empowerment, express and articulate um, who they are. And then of course, anger and frustration can result if you are an MG with emotional authority. So oftentimes, you know, the MG with emotional authority doesn't honor their emotional wave, right? And and if you are an emotional MG, there will be an episode on that for you in this podcast feed. And of course, anger and frustration for MGs can result because there is just sort of this whole sense of them being too much for people. You're just too much. Can you shrink yourself down, please? Like you're too much this, you're too that, you're too whatever it is. And that can lead to a lot of anger and frustration. And it can really lead to this sense of like, just being totally out of alignment with who you are. So when you think about a congruent to your design, aligned manifesting generator, there's someone who just really bounces from thing to thing and passion to passion, moving lots of things forward along the way. They trust their sacral response. They trust that yes, no, that happens in the now. And they really the honor the timing of their life in response. They really balance and soften their doing power with their informing. They really learn to balance their alone time and time with others. They embrace their superpower ways of getting like multiple things done at the same time. And then they collaborate with people who understand, particularly projectors, their deep need for alone time and their deep desire for freedom. And when this happens, they really just exude confidence and they exude and embody individuality and their unique expression of who they are. And so when we think about a manifesting generator, the big thing for them is to understand that alone time is key for them to really process They are multi-passionate. So anytime I always hear someone saying, oh, I have three businesses, I'm like, MG. (laughs) So understanding that that multi-passionate stuff can make things take longer, particularly in the business world. They're multitaskers. So understanding that they may skip steps along the way because they're working on multiple projects. Yes, no questions are great for a manifesting generator, and there is often a but. So yes, my sacral says, or aha, uh-huh, my sacral says, but da 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 is often how a manifesting generator will respond. And then of course they respond and then inform. And then when we think about like, what are some action tips for manifesting generators? It's important to understand that you as an MG are capable of getting more done than most. You have a incredible ability to move fast and adapt. And you have that sustainable energy that can work for long periods of time and is meant to be used up each and every day. As an MG, you're going to thrive when you multitask and multitasking is part of your process. So allow yourself to do that, even if you have to sort of reckon with the fact that you've been shamed in your life because you have multitasked. Understand that you are happiest when you have time and space to visualize your ideas. And this allows you to try them on and sort of get your feet wet a little bit before you start taking action. Once you have visualized, pause, respond, and inform, then take action. MGs like you are here to create, do, and make an impact. So momentum and going fast can be when paired with informing can feel like you're stepping out of your momentum and can feel very frustrating and feel like, oh, I have to inform these people and it's going to slow me down. 
However, informing decreases resistance in your relationship. And this re- decreases turbulence so that you don't damage a relationship. You don't have to inform everyone, make a list of the three to five key, key people in your personal life and in your business and inform those people, not so that they change your mind, just so that they're aware of what you're doing. Think of it as a PSA or here's the 411, right? It's a, it's a memo. It's not being changed. It's already set in stone. And so you are part manifester and part generator. So finding the balance of visualization and initiation and action and pausing and responding is really going to be an important step on your journey. So understanding and learning to understand what that feels like in your body becomes incredibly important for you to live in congruence with your design. And, And the informing aspect of this may feel unnatural to you, but embrace that discomfort of it because it's going to keep you from ending up in the not self. And so ultimately you will find more joy along the journey by following this strategy. As an MG, you are incredibly well-equipped to work in high pa- high-paced environments, which require you to switch gears. MGs like you are incredibly good at switching gears from thing to thing to person to person. So find an environment, find a business that allows you to do this, that allows you to challenge yourself, that keeps you out of boredom. <laughs> and then own your process and don't feel the need to explain it to others. They won't understand your ways of juggling lots of things. And that's okay. As an MG, you are highly capable of moving very fast while most of the other people around you will not be able to move so quickly. So have some grace for those people in your life who cannot move as quickly as you. Learn to be patient with the speed of others will be important step along your journey, particularly in business. And because you are multitasking, because you are multi-passionate, having a generator or someone who can help you with those steps that you skip along the way and those things that you find yourself going crazy doing where you end up bored or you keep pushing them off for another day, have someone on your team who can help you with those things. And so when we think about what does all this mean in business, multitasking is part of your process. Embrace it and don't feel like you have to explain yourself for it. As you grow your business, you're going to be pulled in a lot of different directions and you may feel called to try on lots of different business models out of fear of missing out. However, I encourage you to really stay focused on one business model. Channel your multitasking energy to create strategic relationships and offering service in a different way within the context of these relationships. So for example, where can you come in and be a support coach inside of a mastermind? Where can you come and teach and collaborate in a different group of people? This creates a really safe environment for you as an MG to show up in your empowered self and really attract and magnetize a following to you. Workshops and master classes are a great way for you to channel your multitasking energy if you are feeling bored with your one-to-one business model. You may, in fact, want to offer your clients multiple ways in which you show up for them. So some days, as an example, you might feel like teaching. Other days, you might just feel like boxing and other days you just might want to be in creation mode. So develop a business model around those things. Social media is a great tool that you can use to test out your new ideas, but forgive yourself, please, for not being able to show up consistently because that is not what you are here to do. So when you think about social media, it is all about quality over quantity for you. So when you feel inspired, post. Otherwise, don't sweat it. Find someone, like I mentioned, to support you with the details. You move fast and you can get hung up in the details. So find someone who can help come behind you and pick up those pieces that you skip. It will save you a lot of frustration. And I highly recommend for every MG that you run your course or program first live so that you can get feedback 
and thrive off of that feedback. Um, I have seen many MGs be wildly successful by simply putting up a wait list, engaging interest, then creating the thing once they know they have an active list of people who are interested. So thank you for spending this time with me today. I hope you glean some insights about yourself as a manifesting generator in this episode, and we will catch you on the next one.